Despite Houston not being the most popular destination whatsoever, its main airport, George Bush Intercontinental, handles around 20 million passengers every year. Apart from the fact that the city is a big industrial center, its airport serves a major hub for one of the big three US airlines, United Airlines. This means that the great majority of those 20 million passengers are connecting passengers, using United Airlines to reach any of the multiple destinations they serve from that hub. Given that most people who travel through Houston are connecting passengers, I thought it would be a cool idea to explain how connections work there, both for international and domestic arrivals. It does not really depend on the destination of your next flight, it is the same if it is domestic or international. What changes the procedure is whether you're entering the United States through Houston or if you're transiting from another US city. Let's start with the most complicated case, which is arriving on an international flight. Mind you, it is not complicated at all, actually. You will just have to follow the steps that every passenger entering the United States has to. United operates across multiple terminals at Houston Intercontinental. In theory, United Express operates from Terminal B, United Domestic Flights operate from Terminal C, and United International Operations are handled from Terminal E. If this works the right way, if you're arriving on an international flight, you will arrive into Terminal E, which was my case. Also, arriving from Newark, I arrived into Terminal C, just as the theory says. However, it was not that way when it came to departures. My domestic connection departed from the E gates and my international flight back home departed from the C gates. This might have to do with aircraft assignment or gate availability. Anyway. In case you arrive on an international flight with United and you're not in Terminal E, you just have to follow the signs. Probably, it will require an extra ride in the airport's train, and that's it. Let's still take my own case. I arrived into Terminal E, where the passport control area is. All I had to do when I stepped off the plane was to follow the signs. Having arrived at Terminal E, I just had to walk a bit on a separate, exclusive level for international arrivals, making our way to the passport control area. Unlike some other major airports in the United States, such as Miami and New York JFK, for example, Houston didn't have the automated passport control machines. Consequently, everyone had to make the line to see an agent. At 6 a.m., most of the cabinets were closed, so it took us literally an hour to clear that, without it being extremely packed. For this reason, I recommend that if you are arriving in Houston on an international flight and have a connection, leave some time between flights in case the same happens to you. Eventually, once you've cleared immigration and you're allowed into the United States, you must follow the signs to pick your luggage. It is basically walking on the only possible way and you'll make it to the baggage claim hall. Until this point, it is the same for everyone. It does not matter if you're connecting or not you will always have to collect your luggage upon arrival into the United States, in any airport you are. Once you have your luggage, it's time to drop it off again. For that purpose, you must follow the signs of connecting passengers, which will take you towards the end of the hall. There, you'll find an area where there will be some United employees. They will scan your bags and drop them off again for you. That process was very straightforward in my experience. It really called my attention, but it makes a lot of sense as well. United handles a lot of connecting passengers every day in Houston, so it is necessary that they have it very well prepared. You don't really have to worry about anything. Once your bags are dropped off again, the employees will indicate where to keep walking and you'll have to make it through security again before you can head to your connecting flight's gate. Bear in mind that if you're arriving on an international flight and connecting elsewhere, you'll have to go through security in your entry point to the United States, which in this case is Houston. Especially think of that when planning your connection time. So, this is pretty much it for connections from international flights. It is the same anywhere in the United States, but the idea is to make this video specifically for Houston so that you guys flying United know what to expect upon your arrival. Overall, it's nothing complicated. Now, let me share my experience connecting from a domestic flight in Houston. In my case, it was a connection for an international flight, but it is exactly the same if your next flight is also within the United States. As you're arriving in a domestic flight, 
you have already gone through security in a US airport. So when you deplane, you will be inside the terminal building in the pre-boarding area. Once you find yourself there, all you need to do is to look at the departure screen, see where your next flight departs from and head to the gate. In my case, I arrived into terminal C and my next flight was leaving from that same terminal a few gates away, so it was extremely quick and easy. What might happen in Houston or in any of these major hubs is that you arrive into one terminal and your next flight departs from another. For instance, talking about Houston, it might happen that you arrive into terminal C and need to make your way over to terminal E for your next flight. In this case, you just have to follow the signs. Most probably, you'll have to take the airport train and that will be it. It shouldn't take you too long either. So, basically, all you need to do when connecting from a domestic flight in the United States is head to your next flight's departure gate. This is it for this new series first video, where I will cover how to make your connection at different hubs around the world. Hopefully, I will have the chance to travel a lot in the months to come and can share as many experiences as possible to help you guys out. This being it for today, I hope you find this video useful and I'll catch you next week for a new one. Until the next one, 